of Berkeley Street, only is usually not too busy at 3.45 in the afternoon. It was a day I'd never forget. I'd been a police officer for just a little more than a year. That's me in the middle, Bob North. Williams and Officer Mike Wilson. All right, let's go to work. That was great. Check on it at 240 and let you know. KMA 550. Well, it's, uh, it's in 207. 207. 207. So, report well, of a suspicious auto parked with the lights on and the horn blowing in the vicinity of Shasta, just east of Park Hills. KMA 550. 207. Go ahead, 207. You have any further information on a suspicious auto? Go ahead, 610. Do we have a non-conference tow down here at Jim and Anisha? Jim, do we have anything else on that uh, suspicious Negative. auto at Park Hills and Shasta? Negative. Negative 207. We have no further information, Negative. except the occupant may be in need of help. Yeah, Call me at 510. 210. Follow up on that suspicious auto at Park Hills and Shasta. KMA 550. Check. Go ahead, 207. On that suspicious auto, it's a blue 54 Plymouth, license number, Mary Lincoln Union, 628. 207 out. I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby right now. Please help me. Hey. Stop! Wait! You've got to help us. You've got to help her. I'm going to get an ambulance. If the truth were known, I think I was more scared than she was. Then I remembered one day, a week before, after our first aid class, the instructor gave us his most important advice. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep calm. If there are no more questions, gentlemen, that's it for today. Class dismissed. Thanks a lot for helping. I really appreciate it. Hi, Jim. How's it going? Uh, Chuck, you know Jim Branch, don't you? Jim, how are you? This is Bob North, Bob. Chuck Fryer, and Pete. How do you do? I have a question. Well, North has beat one, and I have beat two. And I got to thinking, what would I do if I had to deliver a baby? Seems to me Pete here ought to answer that question. He's delivered more babies than most doctors. That's right, boys. Just call for me, and I'll be there in my trusty ambulance. But what if Pete doesn't get to us in time? What'll I do then? It's the same advice as before. You see, childbirth is to convey a feeling of confidence to the mother in her ability to deliver the child. What would you say was next, Pete? Uh, get the mother-to-be to a hospital before she delivers. That's right. Are there any other questions? Yeah, how do you deliver a baby? I thought we'd answered your questions. All right, I know you're worried about techniques and so forth, right? Okay, so you can't get her to the hospital on time. You conquer your own fear, and you'll have it by calming her, making her comfortable. You ask her to remove her underclothes. You've already asked for the ambulance, and nature is about to take its course. From there on, it's mostly what you don't, not what you do. 
you don't interfere with a natural sequence of events. That's right. For example, you don't try to uh, hurry the birth by pulling on the baby. Now, that could injure the baby's neck muscles and possibly harm the mother. You mean that's all there is to do, just receive the baby? There must be something else. Yes, you support the baby and keep it clear of any waste. Then hold on to it. They're slippery. How about the cutting of the cord and all the other things that doctors do? Well, first of all, you're not a doctor. And if you don't have a receiving blanket and a bassinet in your car, then I'd say your job would be to get the mother and baby to the hospital. If the mother is able to hold her baby, give it to her. For the moment, you could place it face down on the mother's stomach, face down to allow any fluids in the baby's mouth or nose to drain. Just make sure the baby can breathe and is breathing. Well, like uh, Chuck has been trying to tell you, lacking materials and ability, then it's mostly a case of what you don't do. If you could see a birth firsthand, overcome your fear by witnessing it, watch an experienced person like Pete here. Receive the child, cut the cord if necessary. You'd also learn what to do with the materials he carries. But lacking that opportunity, then you simply receive the baby. Any other questions? Yeah, I've got a lot of questions, but as you said, we're not doctors. Hey, we better be going. Yeah, I gotta get going too, Chuck. I'll see you later. Remember, keep calm. Remembering all this was a big help. I decided to put it into action. Keep calm. Why don't you go to there and tell her I'm going to help, and I'll be there in a minute. Two oh seven, two oh seven. Go ahead, two oh seven. That suspicious auto turned out to be an emergency maternity. Uh, could you rush an ambulance? She claims she's going to deliver any minute. We'll try 207. Ambulance to Shasta, just east of Park Hill. Emergency maternity. Check. Shasta, just east of Park Hill. On the way. 207, ambulance en route. KMA 550 clear. An ambulance is on the way. How is she? I'm scared. When Ann called me to take her to the hospital, I didn't think, oh, why did I get a flat tire? Listen, don't worry. We'll manage. How are we doing? Look, make her comfortable and keep her calm. You might take her underclothes off. I'm going to move my car and get some lights in this car just in case. What's the situation? The baby's being born, I think. What'll we do? Your friend is scared enough. Why don't you why don't you go around to the other side of the car and try to keep her calm? You conquer your own fear, and you'll have it by calming her. Now don't worry, lady. Everything is going to be all right now. Why don't you do something? Can't you help her? Can't you give her something? I've called for an ambulance. Now it's up to nature, and our little mother here. You don't interfere with a natural sequence of events. You're doing fine. Oh, what was that? Will you please calm down? Wipe her forehead. Baby's head is coming. You don't try to uh, hurry the birth by pulling on the baby. Relax, Anne. Relax. Uh. You support the baby and keep it clear of any waste. Then hold on to it. They're slippery.
Everything is going okay. It's a boy. It's a boy, Ann. Just take it easy, Bob. You're doing a good job. You're okay. Here, use this to clean the baby's mouth out. Keep at it, Bob. Keep at it. Why don't we check the cord first to see if there's still a pulse? Don't worry, Ann. Be careful. Don't pull on the cord. Just let the afterbirth take its course. Here is where a basin would be helpful. It helps catch any waste. Put your hand on the mother's stomach and massage it gently. That'll help reduce any hemorrhages. Although usually under these conditions, they seldom have such problems. Okay, that ought to do it. Here's my trusty ambulance. Congratulations, Bob. Thanks a heap. But the job isn't over. The cord isn't cut. Well, now remember, Bob, that's not your job. Let's take a look now. George, would you get the maternity kit? Check. Well, how's the new mother? And how's that new baby? Everything looks ship -shaped. Well, the mother and child look fine. Better late than never. Here's a maternity kit. Okay, Bob, here's your chance to practice medicine. I'll show you how to cut the cord. And here's the uh, tying tape. Now, tie a square knot there. And tie the next knot about three inches from the other. Now all you have to do is cut in the center of the two tapes. Here. Atta boy, you're doing fine. Would you like to hold your baby? Here. Hand me the baby and get the mother's friend to come with us. We'll get them to the hospital. Thank you, officer. It'll all be over soon. All right, now the next operation is the placenta or the afterbirth. And I've got a bag here in which to place the placenta so we can take it to the doctor. He'll examine it and can tell if all of it came out and other things, I guess. Good, good. All right, now put this between her legs like a sanitary napkin. Okay, that's fine. Now let's get moving. Ma'am, get your coat. Why don't you go with these officers? They'll take you to the hospital with your friend. Pete, what hospital are you going to? Alda Bates. Her husband and the doctor are waiting there. Right now. Good. Good. Lay back now. Head back. Easy. Fine. Doing fine. How are you doing? Fine. That's good. We'll have you down there in no time. Don't worry. That's it. Stretch your legs out a little bit here. That's good. All set now? All right. 
Oh, I hope everything's going to be okay. I'm sure everything will be all right. Don't worry. I, I feel like I've messed everything up. Oh, don't you believe it. Everything's going to be fine. Look, why don't you go over and cheer up the husband? Give him a big smile, all right? Okay. Good. Well, if it isn't young Dr. North, what are you doing here, applying for a job? I have to complete my report. I don't even have the name of the mother. Well, here, I got most of the information from the neighbor there, Mrs. Case. Your wife's fine, and so is your new baby boy. Oh, Dr. Tiber, have you met Mrs. Case? She's our next door neighbor. I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs. Case. I hope this doesn't prevent you from being a good neighbor in the future. Anne, tell me what happened. Doctor, it was just terrible. I, I don't know what I would have done if this officer hadn't come along. I'm pleased to meet you. You did a fine job. Thank you. How's Mrs. Grant? Both mother and child are just fine. Then uh, I didn't do anything wrong? Well, that depends. Perhaps you and I should have a, a professional conference. If you'll excuse us for a moment, the uh, doctor here and I are going to confer. Do you, do you mind if I sit in, doctor? Oh, please do. I'd, I'd like to get all the details. Now, tell me how you delivered the grandbaby, doctor. That's what worries me, doctor. I didn't do anything. I just received the baby when I was born and tried to keep the mother from worrying. Oh, you did the right thing then. You kept yourself calm by calming the mother and you let nature take its course. It's everyone's tendency to try to do more than they should, such as try to speed up the birth by pulling on the baby, when all you have to do is just let it enter your hands and hold it free from any waste. Uh, it is a pretty frightening experience the first time, though, isn't it? Yes. Say, doctor, just before the baby was born, there was something that scared me for a moment, a big splash of water. Well, that sometimes happens, but it's quite normal. Uh, the birth usually follows. What worried me most was, after the baby came, I didn't know what to do. All the instruction I'd had was to keep calm and receive the baby. Just about then, Pete here arrived. Well, now, don't give me any of the credit. You did the main job. When, you see, when I arrived, the baby was already delivered. So I just tried to help out. I showed him how to use the uh, ear syringe to remove the amniotic fluid from the baby's mouth. Good. Well, you can also use the uh, finger to clean out the baby's mouth, but the syringe is much better. As a matter of fact, that's a pretty handy item to carry in any patrol car. Well, that's the trouble, Doctor. Uh, we don't have all of this equipment in the cars. Uh, what would you carry if you were in a patrol car? Let's see. Well, number one, I'd say the ear syringe. And then if it were a rural area, I'd want sterile scissors, some tying tapes, uh, perhaps a bottle of Fisohex. That's a kind of a liquid soap. And a sponge to wash the mother before the delivery. I uh, think that would do it maybe some sanitary napkins to use after the delivery. Now, all of these items can be used in other emergencies as well. But, of course, you must know what you're doing before you use any equipment. And the thing to do, if possible, is to bring the mother to a doctor. Uh, the cord doesn't have to be cut. In fact, it might be best in emergencies to not cut the cord unless you've been properly trained. You're a beautiful mother. Thank you. I'd like to thank you too, officer. Both of you. I was sure worried. Me too. Well, I've got to get going. I'll see you later. Okay. It's an experience you'll never forget. May I add my thanks? 
May I give you a ride home? No, thanks. My husband will be picking me up. Besides, I want to look in on Ann and Ted. By the way, I'm sorry I was so silly before. I guess I was just plain frightened. But you, you were terrific. Thanks. Well, that was it. Like the doctor said, it was an experience I'd never forget. And one I wouldn't want to. Two oh seven. Go ahead, two oh seven. Two oh seven back in service. Two oh seven. Check a stolen bicycle at twenty six forty Hayes. MA five fifty out. Check. Okay. 